Welcome to episode six of the Motor Car Marketing Podcast. I'm Ashley Myers with MotorCarMarketing.com. In this episode's main segment, I'm going to be interviewing Daryl Mander. Daryl is an expert at Facebook ads. He's got a wealth of information and tips for car dealers and how they can use Facebook to grow their business. So stay tuned for that. If you find this episode valuable, please help us out by giving us a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word and the about word about the podcast, so it's very much appreciated. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to send us an email at info at motorcarmarketing.com. I want to improve this podcast with so some honest, constructive feedback. It's very much appreciated. A couple of quick notes, any website or links that I mention in the podcast can be found in the blog and the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.motorcarmarketing.com slash podcasts. If you'd like to get our free video selling more cars on Craigslist, go to www.motorcarmarketing.com and put in your name and email address into the form in the sidebar. This guide goes through all the recent Craigslist changes and shows you some actual statistics from dealerships who post heavily on Craigslist, both now and last year before the big changes were rolled out. So if you're wondering if you should still be posting your cars on Craigslist or wondering how to get value out of Craigslist ads, definitely check out this free video. So now let's get into the main segment. Today I'm interviewing Daryl Mander, and we're talking all about Facebook ads for car dealerships. Here is the interview. Welcome, Daryl, to the Motor Car Marketing Podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Hey, Ashley. Thanks very much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So to start out, I wonder if you can give us a quick overview of your career in marketing and tell us how you got into Facebook advertising. Sure. Um, so long story cut short, I was working for advertising agencies in the UK for about eight years before I decided to strike out on my own, initially as a solo advertising consultant and then moving into starting my own company. And in the past eight years of my career. Uh, I started out in TV advertising, but quickly gravitated to an area that's much closer to my heart, which is online advertising. And then specifically, uh, Facebook advertising is where I've spent a lot of my time over the past couple of years, especially since I started my own company. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So can you give us a sort of an overview of how Facebook ads work just for someone who, you know, maybe didn't even know that Facebook had an advertising platform, just kind of the, the broad strokes of sort of what you can do with it, how it works, and, and um, you know, the sort of overview. Sure. So I'm sure everyone who's listening to your podcast has heard of Facebook, and even if they're not on Facebook, they've got some broad idea of how it works and what happens on Facebook. So the great thing about doing advertising with Facebook is that there are so many people on there. There's an absolute ton of available ad views that, that Facebook can show to their users because there's literally millions and millions of people logging onto Facebook every single day. And every time someone logs into Facebook, that's an opportunity to show them a very targeted ad for an offer that is customized to the likes and interests in their profile. So the other great thing about Facebook advertising is the amount of information that you can use to target potential prospects. So if you know a little bit about Facebook, you probably know that people tend to put a lot of information about themselves in their Facebook profile. So if you if you scroll into a I scroll across someone's profile, if you were able to put information in there. You could probably see what movies they like. You could see if they've recently moved house. You could see who they're married to. They've got kids. You could see their age, their gender. And all this information that they put publicly available into their Facebook profile, I mean, it, it sounds a little bit sinister probably to the uninitiated, uh, uninitiated but it's all, <laughs> it's all information that we can use as marketers to target people better. So mm -hmm. uh, an example of that might be... Um, targeting people based on their previous purchase behavior, which is a new form of targeting that, that Facebook now has available. They've partnered up with a few data companies in the United States, which allow them to uh, not only target users based on information in their Facebook profile, but also based on information about their purchase um, behavior. So there's a whole wealth of different things you can do with targeting on Facebook. And I think that's that's what makes it very appealing for 
lots of small and medium-sized businesses. Yeah, yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but can't you also target um, by the certain pages and businesses that they have liked? So, for instance, someone can like the Ford Motor Company page, and you can target those people that have liked that page, correct? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> it's, it's correct in some circumstances, but uh, sometimes it doesn't quite work out. Uh, so... It's a bit of a gamble whether um, a particular page will be targetable. So if someone likes Ford, uh, you may be able to target basically like the Ford, they may not. And it's not really clear what the deciding factor is. What I've found with uh, the campaigns that I've done is that if a page and you're trying to target its fans, the larger the page gets, the more likely um, it will come the potential audience you can get in your face. But the smaller pages, it's less likely that you can target them as a as a potential audience in your Facebook ads. Um, and I think Facebook's really getting rid of that capability for you to directly target other pages' fans. Instead, they're trying to lump their users into categories. So someone who likes Ford would be put into Facebook's audience category of interest in cars. So you wouldn't necessarily be able to target them based on the fact that they like Ford, but you could target them based on the fact that they're interested in cars. So um, that's what's happening with Facebook's native targeting capabilities. There are actually some apps out there, some third-party apps that try to get around this limitation and allow you to directly target any page you want. And some of them work better than others. I don't think any of them work perfectly, but if you want to directly target a competitor's page, you're probably going to have to use one of these third-party apps. I see, I see. So, Okay, so now let's kind of dig into um, what we can specifically apply to car dealerships. Um, first, let's talk sort of a strategy question. You can, um, when you're getting a Facebook, age, Facebook um, ad, you're buying a Facebook ad, you can decide whether you want to send those clicks to your Facebook page or you can, of course, send them to your website. And what do you kind of, what would you recommend for a car dealership? Uh, firstly, I recommend that uh, car dealers be very clear on what the goal of their advertising is, because uh, sometimes you might want advertising in order to increase the level of engagement you have on Facebook. Um, and that can later on, uh, increasing your engagement on Facebook, which means the amount of people who who like your posts, who see your posts, who share your posts. If you increase that level of engagement, you will generally increase the number of people who see your posts, and that will help increase your fans. So if you're doing uh, sort of broader work, trying to increase your fan base, trying to increase your engagement, then I think you should really be directing people to your Facebook page, because that's where engagement on Facebook happens, and that's where they'll have an opportunity to like your page as well. Now, if you're targeting people uh, not to engage them with your posts on Facebook, but instead to drive them to an offer uh, that you want them to convert on, turn perhaps you want them to turn into a email sign up or turn into an inquiry about a particular offer at your dealership, then I think the job is often better done by a custom landing page on on your website. So you would create a special. Lo- landing page just for the Facebook traffic and then send your Facebook advertising traffic to that landing page. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's dig in and actually talk about creating some ads. Um, Let's talk about writing ad copy. Do you have some tips and and tricks for car dealers about how to effectively write ad copy for Facebook ads? I do, yes. So firstly, be very aware of your character limits, depending on which type of device your ad show is on. You're going to have different character limits. So uh, if you're showing ads on the right-hand side on a desktop, your character limit is going to be 90 characters. If you're showing ads in the news feed on the desktop, your character limit is going to be 120 characters. And just to confuse things, uh, the mobile character limit is slightly different as well at 110 characters. Now the newsfeed ads, there's the limit, the actual 
limit on your on the amount of characters you can put in is much much higher. But after 110 characters on mobile and 120 characters on desktop, it will get truncated. So they won't see the whole um, ad copy straight away. They'll have to click a little button saying see more, and a lot of people won't click that button. So it really pays to if you're just doing your ads in the news feed keep them to 110 characters or less because that will work in the mobile newsfeed and the desktop newsfeed. And if you're going to put your ads on the right-hand side of Facebook, um, which is which often performs worse than the newsfeed, but it's worth testing because you never know until you launch it and test it. If you're going to put your ads on the right-hand side, then make sure you write 90 characters or less. Um, is, the, is the cost generally about the same, whether you're in the newsfeed or on the um, sidebar? It depends what cost you're looking at. Um, so I, for, for the clients that I run Facebook advertising for, the most important cost is the cost per conversion. Or and yeah. the conversion would be the someone uh, inquiring on a form on your website. So we would call that a, a cost per lead. Or in, in the case that it's someone making a direct purchase, it would be a, a cost per sale. That cost per conversion is the most important um, cost to look at for most campaigns that we run and in terms of cost per conversion often the right hand side will be more expensive than the news feed because less people see it um, I see ever. so your cost per click might be less but your cost per conversion might be more because you're not getting as good engagement correct yes I see. Okay, so let's talk about the pictures um, that people use with Facebook ads. I've seen some very strange um, A-B testing where people put up like really wacky pictures and, and they perform better than sort of more straightforward pictures. Do you have any um, tips on, on what type of a picture somebody should use with their, face, with their Facebook ad? Yeah, sorry, Ashley, you cut out about halfway through that question. Could you, okay. you mind repeating Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, so um, what type of picture um, do you recommend car dealers use? I've seen some very strange A-B testing where people use really bizarre pictures, and they actually outperform more straightforward pictures. Um, do you have some tips for what type of picture you think a car dealer might want to use? Yeah, I've, I've noticed that myself with Facebook, and I think it makes sense that if you can – use a picture that's a bit unusual um, versus if you put two pictures side by side and you had one picture that's that inspires curiosity, it's a bit unusual, it's not the normal kind of thing you'd see, and you compare that picture's performance to a picture that is obviously stock photography or is obviously a, a professionally taken uh, photograph used for an advertising message, oftentimes you'll find the unusual picture does better. And it kind of fits in with um, how people interact on Facebook. A lot of people go onto Facebook to look at funny images and they share their funny images that they've seen or they post about weird articles or unusual things that they've read. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, it kind of it works well if you can find an image that is relevant to what you're advertising, but also in some way unusual. Uh, some other things that work well are um, big pictures of people uh, staring, staring at the camera so you get some eye contact that tends to uh, get decent click through rates. Um, with, the, with the car clients that I've worked with, they tend, we tend to find that more uh, men are buying cars than women. Um, or selling cars, as the case may be. So uh, the audiences that we work with in uh, the car industry tend to be a bit male heavy, and as a result, uh, they tend to respond quite well to uh, pictures of women, uh, pictures of attractive women with a car in the background as well. So the, th the thing to remember about Facebook advertising is that it has to be relevant. So don't just don't just go down the route of sex sells uh, because if you put an attractive man or an attractive female on, on your advertising image with no relevance to what you're advertising, it might get a lot of click-throughs, but you probably won't get good engagement on your site. You know, whatever mm -hmm. conversion that you are hoping will happen on your site will likely not happen. A lot of those click-throughs will probably just been someone who was interested in the image and clicked through to out of curiosity. So with MI, it works uh, if you can tie in the, uh, the idea of sex selling with um, maintaining relevance. So, you know, a, a, an attractive looking female who's driving a car, 
you know, it sounds a bit cliche, but it works. Um, but mm -hmm. try and give it an unusual slant to it because people, you know, cliche stock photography of, you know, an attractive man or woman driving a car in, you know, seen it before, done that before. If you can cut something that kind of follows that theme, uh, but doesn't look quite so usual, looks unique, um, that tends to work. And you can also, with advertising, you can get, um, when you do a Facebook ad, you get two areas you can work with. You can work with the ad copy, the, the written um, part of the Facebook ad. So you can write in a, a message or offer there. But you can also write in onto the image. And you have to make sure that less than 20% of your image is covered by text. And as long as less than 20% of your image is covered by text, you can put on whatever text message uh, you want onto your image. So that helps a lot as well if you take a, a, a nice, attractive photo that will get a good click-through rate and then perhaps put on some of the details of your offer on there. So, for example, if you were offering uh, free test drives of a brand new model of car, you could you know, write free test drives or you know, click through the site to find out more um, as long as you can fit back into less than 20% of the space in the image. I see. So you literally embed that, that when you're creating the image, you literally embed that text into the image. It's not something that gets, that gets put on there by Facebook. No, it doesn't get put on there by Facebook. The, the onus is down to you, the marketer or, or the advertiser okay, okay. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah, okay. to I edit the image yourself. And there's okay. lots of very easy to use tools online that will help you uh, overlay images, uh, overlay text onto images. Sure. So, um, let's talk about um, clicks versus impressions. Um, w what should what should a dealer be looking at in terms of how they decide whether they want to buy clicks or impressions on Facebook? Um, I my advice uh, now that the Facebook have released a a new type of um, a new type of bidding mechanism. Uh, so you can either uh, all Facebook. Ad generally bidded for in a sort of advertising auction. So if you bid high enough and you outbid the other people who are trying to show up for that particular user, then you will win the, the mini auction and your ad will be shown. So when, when you're bidding in these auctions, you can choose to bid for clicks or impressions. And my advice is almost, almost always going to be to bid for impressions because Facebook have uh, recently released a new uh, bidding type called optimized CPM, which is um, CPM is, is cost per thousand impressions, so cost per view, basically. Mm -hmm. And optimized cost per view basically means that Facebook is going to optimize the bid for you. So you tell Facebook um, you achieve with your advertising. So let's say you tell Facebook that you want to pay up to nine bucks for someone to fill out an inquiry form on your website. Then Facebook goes and it sets the cost per bid according to the best bid in every single situation to meet your goal. So your Facebook Facebook will set what's called a dynamic uh, cost per impression bid based on how likely someone is to hit that goal of 20 bucks per sign up or whatever your goal is. And Facebook is it's quite good at setting those bids. A, a lot of um, pay-per-click marketers have been uh, initially hesitant to hand over the reins to Facebook to, to do the bidding for them. But what I found in, in a lot of campaigns where we've split tested this is that when you let Facebook bid do automated bidding to reach your goals, it tends to reach your goals more effectively than manually bidding on a cost per click or manually huh. bidding on a cost per impression to reach your goals. So the reason why I'd say definitely go with um, bidding for impressions rather than clicks is because with impressions you can get that automated, um, the automated bid, the optimized cost per impression, whereas clicks you don't really get that off. You have to do it manually. 
Mm -hmm. So, um, and we talked a little bit about this when we were when you were um, sort of describing Facebook ads in general. Um, but I really think that Facebook's secret sauce is the way you can laser target certain people. And again, we sort of talked about this, but I wonder if you could give us some very specific tips for what you think car dealers should be going after and how they should decide who to target with these ads. Absolutely. So, first of all, um, one of the one of the great additions to Facebook targeting that has come in uh, within uh, the most recent couple of years is the ability to input data from other sources and use that to target your Facebook advertising. And when I say input data, the most obvious example of that is your email list. So let's say you've start you've got an email list from people who have. Uh, decided to get your email newsletter and you're you're building out your Facebook page and, and you need to get some fans on there fast because you know there's there's nothing sadder than a Facebook page with no no fans it's very difficult to get your initial fans if you're starting from zero so uh, a great place to start is to upload your email list into Facebook and then start showing them ads um, saying you know thanks for being a customer or thanks for being a Thanks for being uh, on our email list. If you liked our service, please also like our page, something along those lines. And what that can do is it builds your fan base very quickly uh, because these are people, if they're on your email list, they might already have done business with you. They might have already purchased something from you or they might have opted in to be on your email list uh, via your website. So these people are very likely uh, to uh, be okay with becoming a fan. So uh, that's not the only thing you can do with targeting your email list. There's a, there's a whole wealth of options. Um, another way that you can use your email list to build a targeted audience is to do what's called a lookalike audience. So let's say you've, you've got a few hundred people on your email list. You, know, you're not, you, can, you might get a few hundred fans out of that if you're, if you're very lucky and you manage to convert every single one of them into a Facebook fan. But there's not a, not a lot you can do just directly targeting a few hundred people. You, you might want to target a lot more people, and there's a way of doing that, but you can start with your email list and sort of grow out from there. So Facebook has released a targeting uh, option called lookalike audiences, and what that means is you can upload data such as your email list, and then you can it to build a larger audience of people who are very similar to the people on your email list. So the people, it's, you, you might not necessarily know all the common themes that, that um, tie together the people on your email list. Now, you might know that a lot of them are male or a lot of them are female or a lot of them are a certain age. But there's lots of other things about them that you might not know. And Facebook knows a lot of that stuff about your audience. They know what they like. You know, they know where they've been. They know um, what well, they often know what restaurants they like to go to. So Facebook can use all that data to find all the other people who are in your target location and who have a very similar profile to the people on your list. So it's a great way of expanding out your marketing to a much larger list of people who are are not necessarily on your list, but are very similar to that list in terms of their profile and demographic. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a minute about geotargeting. I know a lot of car dealers, you know, they sell, let's say, to people that are like within 30 miles of their physical store. Can you give us some, some tips and kind of tell us how geotargeting works in Facebook ads? Sure. Um, straightforward, when you do Facebook advertising, you get to target within a, I think the lowest lowest uh, denominator is 25 miles, or it might be 10 miles, I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head, I'd have to go and check, but you can target to a particular city or a particular town within, a, within an area, and then if you want to, you can also put a radius around that, and I believe the radiuses are 10 miles, 25 miles, and 50 miles, something like that. You get, you get to choose a few different radiuses. So mm -hmm. depending on how far you want to target it, you can cast that net um, however wide you want with Facebook. And yeah, it's, it's pretty accurate. Um, and it's as simple as 
writing in your target area into your your targeting um, section of the Facebook ads interface. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing I've heard a lot about, just um, read, is is people have horror stories about getting their Facebook advertising accounts banned and canceled. Do you have some tips on how to avoid that, um, and some things that Facebook looks out for that you definitely should not do? Yeah, I think if we're considering your audience, um, this is probably not going to be a uh, big problem. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but the people who you hear complaining about getting their ads account banned, are they are they uh, car dealerships or are they in a different... No, no, no. It's, yeah, no, it's most of the like, affiliate marketers and right. that stuff. Yeah, yeah so yeah. Uh, I think your audience will be safe from this. The, the guys who complain about getting their Facebook ad account banned uh, are often, as you say, affiliate marketers who might be using shady marketing techniques to um, trick people into clicking through to a site that they didn't think they were going through to, or mm -hmm. even affiliate marketers who are completely above board and doing everything by the book. Um, Facebook can be a bit tricky with you if you are an affiliate marketer, simply because some affiliate marketers are a bit shady. Yeah, yeah. So... so yeah. Uh, so bottom, bottom line, though, yeah. other sectors um, have a hard time. You haven't yeah. seen, though, the, the, the reputable businesses that you've worked for, you've never seen any problems. Correct, yeah. The only reputable business uh, that I've worked with that has had problems are uh, businesses in the weight loss industry. And uh, unfortunately, it's uh, the same thing as with the affiliate marketing. They, they just get the good businesses get damaged by the sort of small minority of of uh, weight loss businesses that that are sort of miracle cure, sort of snake oil uh, kind of uh, solutions. But car dealerships, I've never had, I've never seen problems in that particular space. Okay, perfect. So let's talk a bit about your company. Maybe you can just give us um, the two-minute elevator pitch for your company and, and what you guys do. Sure. So uh, my company is called BigFlare.com. Um, so that's B-I-G-F-L-A-R-E.com. And we are a Facebook advertising, uh, Google advertising, and retargeting uh, specialist company. So we help uh, clients who need to advertise on Facebook or who need to advertise on Google and don't have the time or the skill to do it themselves. So we do everything as a, as a managed service and um, we build the campaign for you, uh, we manage it ongoing, and uh, we focus on sort of direct response campaigns where we're held very, very accountable to getting measurable results. Um, and yeah, that's, that's us. Um, you can Perfect. check us out at bigfair.com and um, see more about us there. Perfect. I'll, I'll link to that directly in the show notes so people can click straight over to that. Sure. What's the best way for um, people to keep up with you or contact you? So uh, the best way to contact me is on my email address, daryl at bigflare.com. And uh, I suppose you can, link to, my, you can uh, link to my email address from the show notes, or should I spell that out? No, no, exactly. I'll link to it in the in the show notes as well. Yeah, and with regards to keeping up with me, um, I, I, I don't. We, we don't really uh, blog or do much content marketing, but any sort of updates happen on on the site over at uh, bigbear.com, dot com. So that's probably the best way to keep up with what I'm doing and what we're doing as a as a company. Perfect, perfect. So, Daryl, you've been very generous with your time. I really appreciate your coming on the show. Oh, absolutely. It's been fun. I always love talking Facebook. If you're currently looking for a high-quality auto dealer website, check out our sister site, MotorCarSites.com. We offer high-quality auto dealer websites at a very affordable price. Dealers can typically save between $50 and $150 per month by using our service. You can upload as many cars as you'd like at no additional cost. We automatically can export your cars to all the major platforms like Cars.com and AutoTrader, so you don't have to manage your inventory in multiple locations. We can have your new website up and running, usually in less than 24 hours. Setup is free and easy, and there are no long-term contracts, so you can cancel at any time. Check out MotorCarSites.com to learn more. 
On the next episode of the Motor Car Marketing Podcast, I'm going to be interviewing Tom Liebelt. Tom is an expert at local SEO. He's got some great tips and tactics for car dealers and how they can rank their websites highly within the Google search results. There are some really simple things that everyone should be doing, and Tom tells us exactly how those things can be done. So keep an eye out for that. Just a couple of comments on today's interview with Daryl. Like the interview before this one on Google Pay Per Click with Brock Clouser, I know things can seem complicated if you've never done any of this type of advertising. It really isn't all that confusing, though. Just like with Google Pay Per Click, you can set a maximum daily budget. So that's my recommendation. Just get in there, create some ads on Facebook, set your max daily budget at $10 or $20, and just see what happens. Consider it money spent on learning. I also think that Facebook ads can be a small part of your overall social media presence. As Daryl just explained, it's pretty easy to drive people to your Facebook page and pick up likes that way. I would highly recommend that you go back and listen to episode four of the Motor Car Marketing Podcast 2, where I interview Rachel Harrow. She laid out a pretty comprehensive social media strategy, and as I just said, I think Facebook ads can be a part of that overall strategy. It's good to understand the basics of how these systems work, even if you hire a consultant or agency to come in and manage the campaign for you. If you understand at least the basics, it will really help, help you interface with the people you hire to do this sort of work. Anyway, that's our show. I hope you get some value out of it, and it can help grow your business. Thanks for listening.